So I want to talk now about a qualitative technique called the phase plane. So if you recall that when we were dealing with first order differential equations, uh, for instance, the differential equation dq dt is equal to q1 minus q, uh, it might be difficult to solve these analytically. This one's not too bad, but it is helpful to study um, solutions to this in uh, a slope field plot to try and understand what graphically solutions look like rather than um, just seeing exactly analytically what the solutions look like. This gives us a good qualitative understanding of what the solutions do. So for instance, for this differential equation, uh, we draw the slope field and it looks something like this, where we have an equilibrium solution at one and solutions decay towards that from above and below. And there's also an equilibrium solution at zero. So solutions from the top will come down like that. Solutions from the bottom will come up like that. So this is a very useful technique because it gives us a good uh, intuition and a good qualitative understanding of what solutions look like. OK, so now let's consider a system of differential equations. And for systems of differential equations, we can do a very similar type of analysis. So the system that we're going to look at is x prime is equal to 4x minus 3y. y prime is equal to 6x minus 7y. And to move further on this, what we first do is we look for what are called the critical points. The critical points are the points where the x prime is equal to 0 and y prime are equal to 0. So here that means 4x minus 3y is 0 and 6x minus 7y is 0. And this only happens for this system when x is equal to 0 and when y is equal to 0. OK, so what we do then is we construct a phase plane plot where we plot uh, on our plot, we do a parametric plot of y and x, the solutions y of t and x of t. And there's a critical point at 0, 0 there. So how do we determine the rest of the behavior in our phase plane? Well, what we do is we look at eigenvalues and eigenvectors of our system of equations, and that tells us what happens. So our uh, writing our system of equations as a set of matrices uh, and vectors, we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix, and it's not too hard to do. Uh, what we find is one of the eigenvalues is negative 5, and that corresponds, of course, to a decaying solution, decaying with time. And we find an eigenvalue solution of lambda equal to 2, and that describes growing solutions. The corresponding eigenvectors for these, um, the eigenvector for negative 5 is, is 1, 3, or you could write that as y is equal to 3x. If you go to the phase plane then, what that means is if you draw the line y is equal to 3x, solutions along this line decay to 0. So they decay along that part of the line. For the other eigenvalue, lambda equal to 2, the eigenvector is 3, 2. Or you could write that as y is equal to 2 thirds x. So on our phase plane, we draw a line y is equal to 2 thirds x. And this corresponds to growing solutions. And so solutions grow from this particular solution. OK, and all other solutions in the phase plane kind of follow this flow in phase space. So you can get a qualitative feel for what solutions should look like. So if we start in the bottom left-hand corner, then solutions will kind of curve around like this. And the upper left-hand corner, they curve around this way. Bottom right-hand, they curve around like this. And upper right-hand, then they curve like this. And so they all kind of asymptote to the y is equal to 2 thirds x solution. Uh, we can look at what the actual solution uh, is for this, plotting it using Mathematica. And indeed, we find the same kind of structure. We find the line along which solutions tend to grow, y is equal to 2 thirds x. And then there's also a line along which solutions decay. And then all of those solutions kind of interpolate between there. Let's look at another example. So let's look at the example x prime is equal to minus 2x plus y, and y prime is equal to minus 4x. So again, we study the critical points of this system. And the critical points here um, correspond to setting x prime and y prime equal to 0, 
And again, this actually only happens at x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. And so again, we draw in our phase, pla phase plane plot uh, for y and x, the critical point at 0, 0. To study the rest of the behavior and the rest of the phase plane, we look at the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And so again, writing this as a matrix equation, we find the eigenvalues of this matrix. And the eigenvalues are negative 1 plus or minus i square root of 3. So if you remember, the eigen solutions um, correspond to uh, e to the lambda t. And so a lambda uh, with a negative 1, that means that you have decaying solutions with time. And then the imaginary part of the solution, of course, represents rotations in the plane or oscillations. And so on our phase plane plot, we should expect um, solutions which kind of oscillate or rotate around the center and decay in towards the center. Should it be clockwise or counterclockwise? Well, one way to do this is you look at the x prime uh, differential equation and you choose a point on the axis, say x equal to 0 and y is greater than 0. Then x prime must be greater than 0 as well. So it points to the right, the vector points to the right, which means you have clockwise motion for the rest of the phase space. So you get some motion like this in phase space. You get solutions that spiral in and decay to zero. Again, let's look at what it actually is in Mathematica. And so here we see the actual plot. I want to talk a little bit about how you do this. In Mathematica, you'd use the stream plot uh, argument. And then inside the arguments of stream plot, you'd use x prime and y prime as so. OK. Um, so this is uh, an interesting behavior that we didn't see in the previous one, where we see the spiraling in behavior. Um, on the previous one, we saw some behavior uh, where the solutions were kind of growing with time. So how do we know what types of critical points we have? How do we know what the general behavior should be? Well, there's some general kind of classifications of types of critical points. One type of critical point is when solutions just spiral around the center without decaying into it. It's called a stable point, also called a center point. Um, you could also have critical points uh, where solutions decay inward to the critical point, or uh, so not just spiraling in, maybe they just come straight in rather than spiraling in, like so. OK, so these are called stable attractive points. Another name for them are nodes. Uh, you could also imagine um, solutions which don't spiral in or come in, but rather come straight out. And those would be unstable points, uh, also called nodes. Um, so you could imagine it. Uh, either coming straight out from the critical point or spiraling out from the critical point. Again, these are called unstable points. Or you could imagine a hybrid. So you could have or critical points where it's stable in some directions, but unstable in other directions. And so solutions kind of interpolate between these. That was our first example, where so along some directions um, it's stable, along other directions it's unstable. And these are called saddle points. So again, how do you know which one you have? How do you know what type of uh, critical point you have and what type of behavior you should have? As we've seen before, you, what you do is you look at the eigenvalues near the critical point. And then the eigenvalues tell you roughly what type of behavior you have. So for a stable point, um, you should have both eigenvalues be pure imaginary numbers. So you only get pure oscillations. For a spiraling in uh, so type of solution, then you should get a eigenvalues, lambda, which are complex and have a negative real part. So you get that decaying part to the eigenvalue. Um, if solutions come straight in, then the eigenvalues are real, both of them are real, and both of them are negative. Uh, in contrast, if you have a uh, critical point which is completely unstable, like this, then the eigenvalues are real and positive, both. 
If uh, solutions spiral out, then the eigenvalue is uh, complex with a positive real part. And finally, if you have a saddle point, then what that means is you have an eigenvalue, one of which is positive and one of which is negative. So this is a just a brief overview to some of the qualitative behaviors of uh, phase plane plots. And in the next video, we'll look at how you use this to study nonlinear systems.